EIS Machine LLC and utilizing Odoo to create a custom engineer to order solution featuring Jivu, an Odoo consultant at Novobi, with an overview of the business and its challenges from Andy Wilcox, the president at EIS. Novobi is an Odoo Gold partner from Austin, Texas, that has been delivering solutions for over seven years with the help of more than 30 Odoo professionals. We offer well-crafted turnkey products in addition to professional services from our staff CPAs, data scientists, cloud architects, business consultants, and more. So you could say we're a software and a service company. Thank you for joining us in this case study featuring EIS Machine, which represents three brands in the industrial manufacturing space. We're going to discuss how we utilized Odoo to create a custom manufacturing system for them that allowed for engineer to order workflows. It replaced legacy systems with a modern Odoo application, integrated with design software seamlessly, and also connected to a unique payroll solution for an all-in-one platform. Here's Andy Wilcox to tell you a little bit more about the business, followed by Ji Vu to tell you more about the solution that we built. My name is Andy Wilcox. I'm the owner of Engineering and Industrial Services. Uh, we also go by the name Rando Machine and Inline Cleaning Systems. Uh, we've been in business over 40 years, building custom machinery uh, for a variety of industries, mainly automotive, construction, aerospace, uh, consumer products, agriculture. We do have a quite a varied business and machines are highly customized or completely custom. Uh, it's quite a challenging environment, uh, honestly, for an ERP system. We chose Odoo, you know, not because it was completely set up exactly the way we needed it out of the box. Um, you know, on the contrary, there's quite a lot of customization that needed to be done. But we felt like the, the platform was very flexible and open. Being open source uh, was a big advantage. Uh, and we felt like it was built on a modern architecture that would allow us to keep the software for you know, a long time, and we're, we're planning on a, a 10 to 20 year time horizon at least. Our engagement with Novobi was quite broad in terms of the scope because um, we, we brought, you know, everything about our business uh, onto the one platform and asked them to uh, basically help us develop um, the engineer to order features in Odoo that we needed. Uh, previously, we had most everything, but we did not have our payroll integrated. One of the the things from our engagement with Novobi that uh, has become uh, apparent um, in terms of its value is the importance of having uh, a good CPA on the development team. That's been invaluable for us, especially as we've uh, integrated the payroll and um, you know a lot of the engineering to order in terms of the accounting moves of all these products in and out uh, and bills of material. It's been really important to have a, a CPA involved and Novobi was able to uh, successfully make a lot of those changes, both in out-of-the-box Odoo and then also in some of the apps they developed um, for payroll that have been invaluable um, in our implementation. Now that you've had an overview of EIS and the challenges they've faced, here's Jivu to talk more about how Novobi built a solution for their engineer-to-order workflows. Thank you, Kelly. So in this presentation, I will uh, explain the system before Odoo, the objective that we have set when we first started the project, and a journey that uh, we did to implement Odoo for EIS. We also discussed lessons le uh, that we have learned and recommendations that we have for other partners uh, if they uh, would like to start an ETO implementation for another clan. Um, so before Odoo, EAS machine um, used uh, a legacy system for over 22, uh, 20 years. And this is an on-premise on system, so it has very limited remote access. Uh, it's, not integrate, it's not integrated well with SolidWorks, uh, a system that EAS used to uh, do modeling and design for the product. And it's also difficult for the team to, uh, to look at the cost of previous project in order to code for new uh, project. And uh, last but not least, it's not integrated well with payroll. Um, so EAS chose Odoo to have an all-in-one fully integrated system, uh, be able to support multiple brands and companies uh, while being able to support high automation and optimization for easier workflow. Uh, it's also nice that this is a cloud-based uh, solution, so everyone can access everywhere and uh, over time. 
um, it will lead to a low GCQ. So our main goal is to let them manage everything in order from CRM, uh, sales, purchase, inventory, manufacturing, POM, barcode, and uh, from financial side, uh, attendance, uh, be able to log the time using attendance, uh, leave management, payroll, and accounting. Um, also, the system in order to will integrate with SolidWorks so that we can get information from SolidWorks. So next are a couple of uh, key features and customization that we made. So in sales, we optimize the quotation process so that they can look at the historical data uh, in order to create a new code. For bomb management, uh, be able to import engineering data from SolidWorks and uh, manage version control in audio. Ideal workflow have a full traceability throughout PO, MO, SO, and invoice. And whenever they update a bump for specific MO, it can trigger multiple changes in inventory report, inventory evaluation, financial report, and uh, the MO information. So I will talk more about that in a couple of next slides. So let's say that we uh, we start a new project or a new manufacturing order. So each manufacturing order, which project is a cost, uh, is a custom project for the client. So, but it's still uh, we can still refer to one of the previous project or the base product to to uh, check the cost and then the bulk structure that we're gonna use. So when you create a new when a client create a new code, they will look at uh, look at one of the previous uh, product, and and then a product can have multiple bump, and and uh, if you look at this column reference, if the column reference is blank, blank it means that this is the, the foundation bump or the base bump of this product, um, and then if you look at the other bump like like this one, if you had uh, if you see MO number, it means that this form is a version that is used for the manufacturing order for this project. Um, so when you create a new uh, project for a new client, you can look at the base form as well as, as well as the form that used for other clients to look at the form structure uh, to to have a good uh, estimate of the cost of the new pro project and also the timeline. So it's really helpful for the uh, the sales team to to estimate the cost and then send the code to the uh, to the customer. So then um, after the the sales order is confirmed, or do we automatically automatically start the MO for bomb management? Uh, one key difference is that for engineering to order custom, uh, workflow uh, or engineering engineering to order industry. It's very important uh, to have the flexibility to update a POM whenever we receive feedback from the customer, because this is an uh, ongoing and continuously improving project. Um, so uh, often time that we want to receive feedback and then we need to change the POM, uh, remove some component, add some component, or increase or decrease the quality. So O2 out of box doesn't support that. So we need to support that for EAS, uh, EAS. and in order to do so, we'll uh, import uh, the bomb file from uh, SolidWorks, update the bomb in here. So whenever you update a bomb in here, it only affects the bomb of this project, and then it will create a new bomb, uh, you know, for this project, but still still tied with the original product. So you you have the, the kind of structure for for later so that you can see the differences between each bomb for each project. So let's say that we update a bomb for each project. It uh, all of these information will be updated uh, accordingly. So let's say that uh, some some um, common cases is when you uh, you need to uh, add more components. So if you Look at this column. It will tell you whether you uh, you already have this component on hand or not. So if the material status is out of stock, it means that you don't have enough stock on hand. So you need to either uh, 
modify it or manufacture it. So you, then you will look at this column route to know whether you need to manufacture it or buy. If it is to manufacture, like in this case, then you OG will show you the the sub MO uh, that that is um, um, created. Um, if it's also check marked order, then this MO is automatically created. Uh, otherwise, you need to create this MO, um, and then the system will link this MO to the parent MO. If it is, is it a product to buy, um, then the route is buy, and then you can see the default vendor to buy from. And if you replace an order, then you can see the source, uh, the PO number, so that you know that we are waiting for this PO number to, to come, and you're going to receive it to the inventory. And then you pick it, and then you uh, uh, send it to the plant floor in order to produce the finished good. Um, and then let's say that you uh, remove some uh, one of or some of the components from the original bomb, then um, you need to return it either back to the inventory location or return it directly to the vendor. So uh, in that case, we have a button right here to click return and uh, have an option to return it to the inventory location or the vendor and click uh, and then uh, generate a refund. Um, and then we have also have other columns like source location to know where this form is pulling from to consume, reserve, uh, and consume like the out of box solution. And of course, when you start the MO, then um, you can see the, the current work orders that you can uh, go to attendant lock time to work orders, and you can see the job cost report. Um, but yeah, one of the key difference is uh, we can update all of these information, the bomb structure, uh, the cost, the routing, um, and then the traceability of the product. Uh, even if we already, uh, even if this manufacturing order is, is already in progress, so you don't need to wait until you you complete this one and then you create a new one or cancel this one. Uh, very fle very flexible for ETO uh, clients to uh, to manage their manufacturing order this way. Um, another uh, feature that we did is the uh, a project based costing and building. So like I mentioned earlier, we uh, improved the attendance app in order to, to support uh, staff to lock time to work orders and, and, and that information will be later used for uh, the job cost report in manufacturing, um, invoicing, and then uh, payroll. So let me explain a little bit about the job cost report. So the job cost report uh, out of box is generated at the end of the manufacturing order. So when you complete the manufacturing order, then the system can generate the job cost report for you to show you the cost structure. But um, it cannot apply to ETO clients because they need to see the current the the current cost um, of the project and also need to check, maybe check the cost of our project in the first three months or during uh, April to May. So they want to have the flexibility to understand the cost of the project at any given time. Um, so we need to improve the job cost report to show the material cost the labor cost and the overhead cost at any given time, any given period. Uh, even though, uh, if even though the the, the manufacturing order is, is not completed yet, uh, so this is also very important to uh, ETO claim. And then uh, at the end, um, all of these information would be very helpful for financial accounting and payroll because they will know the the costing of the project at any given time and uh, the total time that the, the employee lock time to. So next I will show you an example of the job cost report that I just mentioned. So as you see in this case, this manufacturing order is in not completed yet, um, but we can still show you the material cost of each component. And let's say that you modify the bomb and then you remove some component or you add new component, then this information will be updated as well, the quality and the unit cost. Um, so sometimes that you need to make two purchases, and you know, you make one, you buy one, you bought one unit before, but now you need two more, 
then you buy another unit, then the cost can be different and we need to update the cost correctly. Um, also, we have uh, actual labor costs of so using the attendance after lockdown to keep track of the total duration that the, the staff uh, spend on, on each work order in order to generate this job call report uh, in real time. Um, we also improved the attendance and payroll app. So if you look at the payroll, you can see the, the duration that each employee locked time to, which work order, which uh, work center, and um, the pause time, um, whether this is a rework or not, because you know for each year workflow, they need to rework a lot based on the, uh, the customer feedback. Uh, also, uh, the, the payroll uh, will have, um, Will help help the, uh, the the staff to to manage leave requests and uh, to eat, uh, to uh, bring uh, pay stuff uh, to employee and also look at the um, the payroll information and payroll report. Um, so in the future, our plan is to improve the integration with so it works. So right now it's uh, a little bit manual that you need to. Uh, export the file from certain work and import it to audio to update a bomb. So in the future, we would like to uh, just uh, need to update on certain work and then audio will automatically be updated as well. Uh, document management, so um, we can uh, implement uh, improvement for the document process, you know, approval process for each step of the manufacturing uh, process and uh, QC to have, you know, document like signature, approval, uh, confirmation, uh, and other documents uh, during the, the manufacturing uh, process. Uh, BPM, to so be able to automate itself the processes that we just mentioned or other uh, process during uh, the project um, to have the system run more smoothly and more efficiently. Um, to lower the, the manual work uh, for the, the user. So uh, next thing I want to talk about is, is the lesson that we have learned and the recommendations uh, for other vendor. Um, so manufacturing is complex and uh, audio out of box uh, solution for manufacturing is uh, still very basic. Um, so if you need to implement an ETL solution, you need to expect to uh, customize uh, a few features and when you need to customize it uh, one lesson that we learned is we need to let the key user test early and train them early so that they can give us, uh, give us uh, uh, feedback to improve um, the, the features and also uh, let them have time to understand audio and use the key the features in order so that they can get used it before we do cut over. Um, it's, uh, it's very important for assets because they have been using a system, uh, the previous system for, for a very long time. Um, so it will have some uh, learning curve when they switch to another system, an integrated system like Odoo. Um, another uh, lesson that we learned is um, in uh, inventory and accounting report. Um, so because for ETL, uh, the bomb, the bomb will be updated constantly, not constantly, but frequently. Um, so we need to reflect the correct uh, product costing and inventory evaluation, financial number um, at any given time. So it's very important to uh, to apply the correct uh, method, correct um, inventory method, like LIFO, FIFO, average, for example, um, at, at the right time. and we need to make sure that we record the, the cost at the right time. Um, so uh, since uh, I talk about product costing and event, event evaluation, it's very important uh, for, uh, for the project to have an accountant that, that is familiar with uh, both O2 and, uh, and U.S. accounting um, to make sure that we meet the U.S. accounting standard, the GAAP standard and uh, make sure that we configure uh, everything in the, uh, the journal entry, the event evaluation, uh, et cetera, uh, currently in Ojo. 
um, to make sure that you know, it works for ETL industry. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. Now, uh, uh, in this call, I will have uh, Andy, uh, the owner of EAS, and uh, me uh, to answer any of your questions. So thank you, uh, Doi Wu, for your presentation. Um, we will now move into the Q&A session. Um, to all, you, all of you viewers, please continue posing your questions in the chatter. We will be um, addressing them as we go. Um, there will be no extended Q&A session, so please make sure to post all your questions in the chatter right now so um, we can address them as we go. So um, the first question that came in uh, was from Henry S. How do you handle engineering change orders? I, I can take that one. I think that okay. um, we've, we've decided to implement in two phases and the engineering change orders will be in the next phase. So at this point, we have not implemented ETO in our process. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, there's a further question from Bonnie Smith. How do you handle payroll tax, especially when the tax rules are updated? Yeah, so um, so EIS use uh, Novovi payroll, but Novovi payroll also integrate with, with a third party engine, mm -hmm. uh, tax engine. So whenever that uh, the tax rule is updated, uh, that engine will also update the rule and then we follow it uh, to update the rate. Uh, and then the tax engine can handle complex cases like employees working on different states in the US. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's another question from Nofal Guzman Sabogal. Actual cost method exists for costed the bill of material. I will rephrase that a little, it's not 100% clear. Um, I think it's it's something about the cost methods that exists for bill of materials. So what cost tracking can we do related to a bill of material? Yeah, so we keep track of the actual cost and then also apply, you know, uh, uh, a method or a formula to calculate the uh, the cost, uh, the pro costing. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and did you want to explain the detail of product costing in your case? Well, yeah, so we're using uh, first in, first out costing. Um, because it's a custom engineering uh, engineered product, many of the products that we're using, um, you know, they're not in inventory. So, uh, in that case, we're just capturing the actual cost. Um, but for items where we do have uh, inventory of them, if they're more of a standard part, uh, it's first in, first out. Okay. Thank you very much, both of you. Um, there's another question coming in from Baron Rosendahl. Do you consider a WIP account for both material, labor, and others? Yeah, we, we do have WIP accounts for, for uh, labor uh, material. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's basically it. Um, Doi Wu, could you elaborate a little bit on the tracking that you were working with when it comes really to the design of a product, to the shipping of a product, and the whole tracking cap cap capabilities that um, Odoo is offering? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so uh, on the uh, manufacturing order screen, we'll uh, show the 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 measure, uh, the home picture from purchasing to uh, inventory to manufacturing and uh, and maybe to return and ship to the customer too. So on that screen, they can see um, if the materials is needed to be picked, needed to purchase, restock, or needed to be returned. And if you uh, click on the source, you can see uh, if that is needed to be picked, uh, what PO number that we are waiting for. Uh, if you need to return, you can re click the button to return on that screen, and it can be either returned from the plant floor, the manufacturing floor, uh, to the inventory location, the warehouse, 
or we can return directly to the uh, to the vendor. Um, we also keep track of um, um, the material status, uh, how many units are consumed, how many units to be consumed, and even if you change the design. Uh, and update the bomb structure. So you add or remove uh, the components, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, then everything will be updated automatically. So if you need to buy more items, then you need to um, create a PO. And then after you confirm that PO, it, the PO number will be shown on manufacturing order screen and you can keep track of it. Okay, thank you very much. Um... There's, there was a question coming in from Petro Texera um, on the use of manufacturing orders for assembly. Is that something you've been doing? Um, yeah, so, uh, so, our, um, so for EAS, uh, they, they have uh, manufacturing for assembly, mm -hmm. also uh, sub-level uh, sub bomb. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean basically multi-level bombs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have assembly and then sub-assemblies and then raw material. Okay. And we would need to keep track of all of that. And yeah. you're also using manufacturing orders for that. Okay. Yeah. Um, one further question from uh, Baron Rosendahl: How do you post the costs into those work in progress accounts? And do you consider different labor cost rates caused by, for instance, overtime? Um, Andy, can you help me with this question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, as far as the labor cost, we do have a labor cost per uh, workstation. Yeah. Um, but honestly, for the what we ac we actually use the the employee's actual cost. Um, mm -hmm. We have a screen where the the employees will clock in and out on the manufacturing order, and when we calculate a job cost. We're using that employee's actual, uh, you know, salary rate, not a standard rate for the workstation. Okay, thank you very much for elaborating a little on that. There's um, one more question from a gentleman called Nofal Jusman Zawgal. Can we use an alternative material in the bill of material? Um, right now, I don't think that we have set up to use alternative material. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so there has been uh, no further questions up until now. So please uh, still send in your questions. We have about a minute left, uh, two minutes left. Um, let me check in here. Okay, okay, okay. Um, no further questions up until this point. Okay, okay. So I'm giving this just another minute. Any other Odoo Experience talks uh, coming up that uh, any of you can recommend to our viewers of this, this particular session? Yeah, for me, it uh, has been a very interesting project to work with. Mm -hmm. um, ETL is, uh, is a very uh, challenging uh, implementation for Odoo. And uh, I think that we, our team have learned a lot from it. Um, Andy, do you want to share any of your experience? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it was um, more involved than we expected. <laughs> I think we got into it and realized, uh, you know, hey, we need to also do this. And, oh, by the way, we need to add this. But, um, you know, the, the beautiful thing about Odoo is that it is very flexible. And um, the Nabobi team has done a great job at, at taking those, uh, you know, those, those issues that they came up and adding them to our implementation. Hmm. Thank you very much, both of you, uh, showcasing this uh, wonderful implementation. Um, we'll have to close the session right now. It's the end of our uh, of a wonderful old experience. 
And um, yes, I'm very grateful for both of you to be here and to all our viewers for your fantastic questions. Thank you very much and have a wonderful next day of the Odoo experience.